All right, thank you so much and welcome back to Daybreak. And uh, today, like we told you earlier on, uh, you know, we are talking about insurance pitfalls, some of the things that you should look out for uh, in insurance. And joining me is one Joseph Mwongi. He likes Mwongi, although the full names are Mwongi Kamau. <laughs> uh, but that's what he likes. Uh, Mwongi is uh, an expert in the field and also uh, the 2018 top, one of the 2018 top 40 under 40 uh, men. So maybe let's begin first of all before we go deep into what the insurance pitfalls are and allow time, guys, time also to send in your questions that you may have in terms of insurance on 22422, which is our SMS number. That is 22422. If you have any questions, I've also asked the same question on uh, our Twitter handle. You can use the hashtag Daybreak if you have uh, any questions. I've asked what problems do you have uh, you know, when in terms of uh, <laughs> somebody already been tweeted and saying that Ken Bugwa one on Twitter says, My folks don't even like insurance, they say it is ungodly. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's uh, and this is more we'll talk more about even motor vehicle insurance. So maybe you can tell us a little bit brief background of uh, your story. Mm. Yes. Oh, thank you, thank you, Willis, for having me. Uh, so as you've said, my name is uh, Joseph Mongi mm -hmm. Kamau. Uh, uh, first of all, I run an insurance agency. So I have a background in insurance, also did it in school, did a bachelor's degree in uh, actual science. Then from there did a master's in finance mm -hmm. and currently pursuing a PhD, mm -hmm. business administration mm -hmm. in finance. So I've had quite an experience with uh, matters insurance mm -hmm. and also other avenues of risk management. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Mm. So when people uh, come and start talking about insurance, you know, mm -hmm. most people, the big, well, I mean, people are sold insurance everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so mm -hmm. when somebody selling selling you insurance, what are mm -hmm. some of the things you should be looking at? Mm. Uh, so first first of all, uh, I think uh, we need to step aside mm -hmm. and stop placing insurance as a product. Mm -hmm. We look at it from the angle of a solution. Mm -hmm. So first, you ask yourself, uh, why do I need a particular type of insurance? So for example, the most common insurance in Kenya is maybe the vehicle insurance. Yes. So it's common sense. Eh? If you don't have a vehicle, uh -huh. you can't buy vehicle insurance. Yes. So the same common sense should, should apply to all the classes of insurance. Mm -hmm. So before purchasing any product, first assess, is this a uh, service which will add value to me? Is it solving a particular problem? Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, there's a hype I just want to have when you meet because people. Because what people eh, have, yeah. yeah. Oh, what no people have. Insurance, yeah. Yeah. insurance. Ah, mm -hmm. umefanya hiyo, kampuni gani? Ah, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So you find a lot of people go there with uh, the wrong expectations. So finally, once once they regret, eh, and then it's, it's become a backlash now to the insurance industry. Mm -hmm. So now uh, you stop, you start becoming a bad mouthing. Mm -hmm. You say, ah, no, insurance, no. Mm -hmm. If I was you, I'll tell you, never take any insurance product. Mm -hmm. So you find the person at the first stage took the, the cover, with wrong assumptions mm -hmm. or wrong expectations mm -hmm. about the product. Mm -hmm. So that's the first step where people should start from. Mm -hmm. And then now from there, there's also the aspect of uh, comparing. So once, once you're given a particular product, you know, the interesting thing about the Kenyan market is uh, there's no particular company offering, offering a, a really unique product. So you can easily compare what these are giving and vis-a-vis -vis another company. Mm -hmm. So the, the difference can be maybe in the timings, uh, in the rates also, the costing. So there are a couple of factors which mm -hmm. people should look into. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Talk about motor vehicle because I think that's where what wana sema wana chomeka sana. Uh, uh, yes. Uh -huh. um, and the, what should I look for? Because everything mm -hmm. is always nice. We signed, we are cool. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We are cool. Uh -huh. If you time now we are claim we are part of accidents. We go around in hands. Uh -huh. So what am I supposed to be looking at when I'm looking for motor vehicle insurance, for example? Uh, so first, first of all, for the motor vehicle insurance, eh, mm -hmm. the main problem there is that uh, the information is scanty. So people really know about two types of motor vehicle insurance. Mm -hmm. So you either have uh, third party or, or comprehensive. comprehensive. Yeah. And actually, even most people don't even know the difference between these two, mm -hmm. the comprehensive and the third party. Mm -hmm. All you can know maybe is comprehensive is more expensive mm -hmm. than the third party. Mm -hmm. So first of all, you need to understand what, what am I being covered here. So for example, if you take the third party, you're only being covered for the legal liabilities caused by your vehicle to other people. So any damages to your vehicle, there's no way you can claim on that. Mm -hmm. Once you have the comprehensive, now there, well, that's where a lot of people go wrong now. Because mm -hmm. now you assume, uh, since I have the comprehensive, now everything is covered. Mm -hmm. Anything that happens to my vehicle, the insurance will handle. Mm -hmm. uh, once I have a mechanical breakdown, the insurance will handle. Mm -hmm. So there are, there are limits and uh, exclusions in each company. So someone has to really inquire first before purchasing the cover. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So you ask them, uh, so what are the exclusions, first of all? Mm -hmm. And what, what are, are the benefits? So yeah. the exclusions are, for example, once you buy this uh, comprehensive vehicle insurance, eh, they tell you we'll cover you for the accident to a certain limit. We'll cover you for third party liabilities. So this, uh, once you hit maybe someone, so th the cost incurred by these people, they can cover you for that. Mm -hmm. And once your vehicle is stolen, they can reimburse you. Mm -hmm. Or once uh, if you, you incur losses due to fire mm -hmm. on your vehicle, mm -hmm. they'll reimburse you. But up to certain limits. And there are some things which can happen to your vehicle which aren't covered. So th those are the exclusions. So the a common exclusion which a lot of people don't notice, eh? for example, there's the political violence and terrorism. Mm -hmm. So if your vehicle is damaged due to political violence and terrorism, there's no guarantee that the insurance will cover for that. It can be an exclusion mm -hmm. uh, which you can insure at an additional cost. So those are some of the factors which guys will really ask for mm -hmm. before purchasing mm -hmm. the cover. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And for, uh, what, what am I looking at in terms of, because mm -hmm. like you've said, the main difference yeah. that people know uh -huh. is a third party and com comprehensive and expensive. Bay Koju. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bay Koju. So yeah. like when you say things like uh, the insurance covering for let's say accidents or damage to the car, mm. does it have to be accidents? What about this person who aki reverse mm. a gonge ukuta? Mm. Ama nduthi, yeah. ikuja igonge gari yaki? Igonge gari yes. yaki. Yeah, what's the difference? Uh, in most cases, eh, such incidents are covered. Because mm -hmm. in real sense, that's an accident. Mm -hmm. So as long as you aren't doing it intentionally, <laughs> it was, it's not in bad faith. Eh? You know, you know, you can look at your vehicle, uone, ai, iku paka rangi ni beikali. Uwaja nende nitandike ukuta. So once you hit the wall, and then you come and claim. So that, mm -hmm. that's a type of fraud. Eh? Mm -hmm. But uh, basically, any form of accidental loss is supposed to be covered, mm -hmm. but up to set, set limits by your insurance company. So there's a document which is usually not circulated. It's quite a challenge. I've also experienced it eh, in the industry. Mm -hmm. So for example, once you come to me and sell you insurance, so that's it. I've taken the money to the guys, they'll pay me a commission, I've given you the cover, the sticker, you've, stick, you've stuck it on your vehicle, mm -hmm. but you really don't know what, 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 what type of contract are you in mm -hmm. with these people. Mm -hmm. So may, most probably I gave you a form to fill, or sometimes when they bring you the form, you tell me, ah, stay kujaza, when you jazie, chukua details, mm -hmm. fill them for me. Mm -hmm. So there's a policy document eh, which stipulates all this mm -hmm. information, mm -hmm. telling you all the exclusions, up to what limits you're being covered for a particular thing. So which is quite an important document which mm -hmm. people should actually in demand to have. It's actually a right. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to have it. Yes. It's a proof of what you're covered. Even before you go and claim, you really know. I'm covered this, this I'm not covered. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so you're saying is that before you put your sticker, mm -hmm. I have to, do I have to go physically to that company X uh, to get that to document? To get the document. Yes. No, no that, that's where the contrast comes in. Okay. Eh? In practice, what's currently happening is, once you buy, we come and give you the policy document. Mm -hmm. So if you didn't know what, what, what we're really offering, it's when you'll know afterwards, after mm -hmm. you've already paid. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the main challenge. Eh? Mm -hmm. But uh, what, what I can advise is you get counsel from an experienced person, maybe someone in the field. So before purchasing, you tell them, show me a copy. Mm -hmm. It's not mine, eh? but show me a copy. I really like to go through it and understand mm -hmm. what are you really covering me here. Mm -hmm. So before I actually commit and pay you, because mm -hmm. what happens is once I've paid you, if I don't like it, now we'll have to cancel. Once we cancel, this will, the, it's a guarantee that some of the cash which I've given you, I won't get back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, before we move on to the others like life, education, uh -huh. you see, there's also, let's say now the major problem is again, like I said, claiming. Claims. So, uh -huh. accident in Mifanyika. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You are asked for a police abstract. Uh -huh. Then you go. Uh, why is there normally that period of delay? That yeah, push and pull, if you can call it. The Why push and pull, that, yeah. which usually happens. Yeah. Uh, so there are two angles of looking at it. Eh? Mm -hmm. So one, one of the angles to look at it is, uh, in real sense, there's also fraud. So you can have a genuine claim, but there are also fraudulent claims. Eh? So this grace period is to investigate, really to look into this. Is it a genuine claim or not a genuine claim? And then the next challenge, or, which causes actually what people say, the push and pull, eh? there's also a human, a human element inside all of this. Eh? For example, if you're employed in Company X, if I give you the forms, eh, I assume I've given them to the Company X, but I've really given them to you. Mm -hmm. If your attitude is wrong, eh, you look at this claim form, wake a can to say, I have important things to do, mm -hmm. concentrate on this. The guys were really pressuring me, because there are some guys really who really camp at the insurance company. Mm -hmm. Once you have a claim, eh, mm -hmm. every morning the guy opens, so the guy looks at it and says, let me sell these guys. Eh? 
they, they remove the headache from me and then now in Guinea but I mm. so that's also an, another challenge eh? mm. which is currently causing the more of a lag so you can see maybe I did my claim everything my paperwork was right because what they tell you eh? once you have a claim the first thing you do report so you can report but also in the reporting stage eh? you're still inter interacting with humans so maybe you'll call your agent your broker or a representative in the insurance company you call them tell them I have a claim ABC but now you're not guaranteed that they'll act immediately mm -hmm. so it's also up to you also to have a personal push eh? mm -hmm. once I've done this do you have a follow-up mm -hmm. see uh, do you receive my documents yes and uh, I also recommend to do it in writing maybe get, ask for an email address forward the physical the soft copy of the same and deliver the hard mm -hmm. copy mm -hmm. and have it signed received mm -hmm. so from there we can easily see you brought this claim on a certain date it's reached a certain date no one has acted on it mm. so if it's the lag is on our on our part eh, as the, maybe the management of the company can be able to look into it ah. you notice that now this, this is the guy letting us down ah. here if the, the the company is purely uh an industry challenge or something they address it from a different from angle. angle yeah okay mm. and so what about like now the people are saying and i've seen even somebody here asking let me see his name mm. is uh, Huntington Mushara. Mm -hmm. and i said uh, one of the problems i have is that they send you to their own select and control garages mm. that definitely do not meet the standards of the client ah uh -huh. <laughs> so so that's also one of the key challenges because eh? for example it's, it's something which is supposed to be done eh? in terms of management in any company even you for example you are the insurance company mm -hmm. there's no you you want to deal with a hundred thousand garages mm -hmm. at once mm -hmm. and uh, you don't have the the information maybe about these people so what happens eh? they don't select the garages mm -hmm. guys bid as a garage there's almost a formula of a tender you come you bring in your, your details and everything and say if you get a job i have the capacity so they come and investigate so first of all do you have a yard do you have the required manpower the skills so once we are sure that our client's vehicle is at your garage mm -hmm. there's a guarantee that it will be repaired mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. all right there's also uh s s somebody else is asking on 22422 mm -hmm. it says that simon from eldorot is asking if you have a comprehensive cover through a broker uh -huh. but then after the accident you realize that the policy was cancelled due to non remittance of the premium who bears mm -hmm. the responsibility uh such incidents have been occurring eh? so mainly it comes back to the to the human element eh? so for example me if, say i'm the broker you've given me this cash uh one it can be a mistake eh? can mistake don't i don't declare you've given me the cash or on the other side maybe it can be a fraud i say uh i need this cash right now but uh, by the time two two months come i'll have cash i'll pay for this guy mm. so we go and write to the insurance company we've received payment xyz we'll pay after a certain amount but uh, in the event now the claim happens, maybe these guys hadn't uh, remitted the cash. So you get a challenge, the insurance company will say, we've already terminated your contract. Mm. So from there, the matter is usually settled through IRA. Mm -hmm. So it's the government body in charge of regulating the industry. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's, that's the first step where you should go. No, no, not even to court. Just go to IRA, report. And uh, make sure for payments, eh, don't do cash. Because that's the main challenge. Because once I give you cash, it will be very difficult for me to prove mm -hmm. I gave you cash. Mm -hmm. But if it's in form of a check or an MPSA, you ask for a pay bill, make a payment, and insure. So one thing people don't ask is the receipt. Mm -hmm. Once I've paid, where is my receipt? Mm -hmm. You know, once you have such documents, it's easy to sort such a case. Because yeah. once you take them to the regulator, so the regulator calls everyone on board, the insurance company come here, you broker come here. So you have this matter. So how will you sort it? So the guys will really settle it out, out of court. Mm -hmm. uh, you come to a compromise. The guy will say, okay, the blunt was on our side. You can do A, B, C, D. And then the regulator can also come up with measures mm -hmm. and say maybe we'll penalize you for this and this and this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about the, there's something I had called cash in, in, in cash lieu. In lieu. Yes. Cash in lieu. Yes. Yeah. So cash in lieu. Eh? So what happens? Eh? So in the event, maybe you have an accident. So the, the, the first option is to take it to a garage in the panel of the insurance company. The, the next uh, option is to say I can repair this vehicle myself mm -hmm. and have it back on the road faster than your garage or at a better rate. Mm -hmm. So what you'll do, eh, you come up with your own estimate. So the, the insurance guys will send the assessor 
also they, 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 they take the particulars and their estimates and also you, you create your estimate and send it to them. Once they see your, your rate is fair, they can tell you, okay, there's no problem, you can repair your vehicle, we'll give you the cash. So in most scenarios what they do, they give you 50% mm -hmm. upfront. Mm -hmm. But it's not real time. It's not like you know, you're just coming out of the office. So they also have procedures. Mm -hmm. So maybe the guys in the claims department will forward it to finance. Mm -hmm. They'll pay you 50%. Yes. Once you repair your vehicle, it has to be reassessed. Mm -hmm. Once it's reassessed, they, they complete now the, the remaining 50%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. That's the common practice. Yeah. Mm. Um, and then there's another one. I know most people have asked uh, about what they're calling surrender value. That's for some other people as well. The insurance mm -hmm. company doesn't want to give out your surrender value mm -hmm. when you are unable to uh, pay premiums. Uh, now, that's, that's, that's not for motor. That's not for motor. That's, no, that's life. life. Yes. That's life. Yes. That's life. Yeah. Now, life, life is quite complicated due to the, 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 the nitty gritties of the, of the document. Mm -hmm. So most people want to purchase a life contract. They give you a really lawyered type of document eh? mm -hmm. with all the terms, henceforth, notwithstanding. So a lot of guys don't read it. Mm -hmm. So you assume uh, what my agent told me is what will happen. Mm -hmm. So even some guys are also promised loans, very weird stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, once you get this cover, you can even take it and get a loan with it for a certain amount. Mm -hmm. So the guy is telling you what he thinks, but it's not what is actually on the contract. Mm -hmm. So in the contract, there's actually a clause about the surrender. So once you go through the contract, eh? So it's easy now to abide with the contract. Mm -hmm. If there's a term or a, a clause regarding the surrender value, it's easy to address it based on the clause mm -hmm. directly now with the insurance company. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when I go to the clause of the... Yeah, on yeah. the policy document, because mm -hmm. that's what people don't have. Mm -hmm. So once you've bought the insurance, you don't have the policy document. Because this mm -hmm. policy document is saying A to Z about what we are covering you and our terms of engagement mm -hmm. with you. Yeah. It's also like when, whenever you're going to pay uh, a vehicle you are asked to pay less the sum insured mm -hmm. or more than the sum insured. Maybe you can explain yeah. that to people. Like, let's say mm. you're getting your, they're reimbursing you. Uh -huh. Is it less the, the sum that you paid for the policy or how does in that the, In the event of uh, an accident. An accident or right off. Yeah, yeah. yeah cause uh, what, what they do, eh, the first assumption is uh, as days have passed, the value of the vehicle has also been reduced. Depreciating. Depreciating, yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's no way they'll reimburse you the actual full amount. But it, it has to be close to the to the sum insured, mm -hmm. the actual value of the vehicle. And also there's another thing which people uh, don't know. Mm -hmm. There's always a term called excess. So excess is a, s a certain amount of money mm -hmm. which must be deducted mm -hmm. from, from the amount. Mm -hmm. No, unless also you've insured against the actual excess right. from being deducted. Uh -huh. So maybe if it's a theft, they'll deduct 20% of the value of your car. If it was one million, they'll pay you 800,000. Mm -hmm. But if you added uh, security features to your vehicle, let's take a tracking car alarms, they'll deduct only 10%. Mm -hmm. So if it was a 1 million vehicle, a uh, value of a vehicle, they'll reimburse you 900,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you have car tracking, it's, you are better off. Yeah, you're actually better off. And uh, it's not just having a car tracking, it has to, have to be a car tracking from a reliable source. Because mm -hmm. now once, once they say you just have to have car tracking, now everyone will say, my vehicle had. Mm. The vehicle had. Mm. So, so, because you have to save now. You see, mm. now uh, you look at this 10%, you have to save it. So, you go and tell them your vehicle has. Mm -hmm. So, what happens eh, before coming on board, uh, if it's from a reliable car tracking company, they have certificates of installation. Mm. So, they attach a copy. So, you have to attach that copy while submitting your forms. So, once they put it, they put it in their database, they say this vehicle has a security feature. It's a car tracker installed by a certain company on this date and the certificate is expiring on this date. So you are guaranteed if it's theft, a theft uh, claim, eh, uh, this person took precautionary measures mm. before incurring the claim. So there's no way we can charge him uh, this, this huge amount of a loss, but when on his side, he was trying to mitigate mm. the risk. Ah. Yeah. Okay. The final question from somebody called, uh, well, they didn't leave their name here, but they say, mm. oh, it's actually Ken from Rongai. Mm -hmm. And he's asking a question that most people ask. Ken from Rongai is saying, Kama gari haikuwa na spesas, alafu weke without kujulisha insurance. Unafa kulipo in case of an accident? Uh, in case of an accident, actually I had uh, quite, a, quite a, a number of people with the mm -hmm. same question. So once, once one of my clients actually, they asked me about it. So there are two ways of looking at it. Eh? You can advise them vaguely, tell them where you weke. So, but the right thing to do, if you are adding spacers, notify your insurer in writing. Mm. If they reject it, you tell them now I'm adding spacers to this vehicle. Will this affect you not paying my claim once I have the a claim? 
and, and if you don't reply to this letter, I'm assuming everything is okay. Mm -hmm. So I'll continue to put the spaces. Mm -hmm. eh? So what they might tell you is, if the accident, if you find out on investigation, the accident was caused by you adding the spaces, now we won't pay you the claim. Because mm -hmm. now you're the one who's added the risk to the vehicle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what's supposed to happen in normal uh, yeah. scenarios. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, so uh, of course, we, because of time, we'll have to wind up. But maybe mm -hmm. you can uh, tell guys, like in case they want to reach out to you, your website, because I still see a lot of people here mm. uh, asking some questions. Yes. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. To reach out to me, uh, the first step maybe Facebook. That's where I'm most active. Eh? Mm -hmm. It's uh, Joseph Mwangi. Uh, the face will just hit my face. <laughs> so, so if there are many Joseph Mungis there, you can't get <laughs> lost. Eh? <laughs> yes. Uh, my website is www.finatrack.co.ke mm -hmm. or www.zaidi.co.ke uh, on phone mm -hmm. 0723-645-810. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where mainly you can find me. But I'm also on Twitter and uh, what is it? Uh, Instagram. Instagram yes. You can search with my name. Uh, I don't use them most of the time. Okay. I'm there. All right. Yeah. In case you can, of course, we'll take uh, a picture as we always do using the hashtag Daybreak now as I'm located up or even not to one every later. Well, to Masama Santa Sana, of course, there are so many more questions. We'll definitely have another discussion as well. Mm. Here, people talk about accident victims and all that. Masama Nia Santa Sana for your time. Mm -hmm. And uh, you say www.finatrack. F I N A. F -I -N -A. Oh. T R A C K. Okay. All right. so, K. Yes, yeah. so that's how it is. So we want mm -hmm. to get some more music as well and uh, go to one Peter Musao. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs>